Hi, good afternoon, and welcome to The Uplift with Vision. And I'm Reverend Patty Paris. I'm your host today for this Uplift. So before we do anything else, let's pray in. I give great thanks for this time spent together. I know and accept it is all good. It is all God. I know there is one energy. It is the energy of spirit. It animates everything in the manifest universe. So it is beating my heart and breathing my breath and circulating my blood. And what I know it is doing for me and as me, I know the same for each and every one of us, that we are an individualized expression of spirit, spirit having a wonderful experience as us in form. So I give this time over to spirit to just let it run wild and free through our time together, knowing it reveals truth, it absolutely heals any false beliefs, and, and it restores and renews everything that it flows through, and we are that. So giving great thanks, I simply step aside, I let it be, and so it is. So good afternoon. It's good to see you again. I'm so glad we're back together. I'm so glad I get the opportunity to do these uplifts so that we can stay together as a community. It's so uh, fulfilling for me, and I, and I hope you're gaining something from these uplift talks as well. So I want to talk to you about today. Where I'm calling today, Where Are You Wednesday? Have my notes. I'm ready to go. So Where Are You Wednesday is about how you show up in life right now how you describe yourself, who you are, who are you presenting yourself to be, uh, who you are and where you are, basically, in your daily life. Like if you were uh, to be asked, hi, how are you, who are you, you know, what would you say? You know, I'm, I'm Patty Paris, I'm 63 years old, I'm married, I have three adult children, I play tennis, I'm a minister. You know, present tense stuff like that, right? I mean, that's kind of how we would describe ourselves. But what happens when we start to describe ourselves, when we start to attribute things uh, to ourselves from the past? And that's really what I'm talking about today, you know? I used to smoke cigarettes. In my 20s, I don't smoke cigarettes anymore. I wouldn't consider myself a cigarette smoker. I would never describe myself in the present tense as a smoker. Smoking was an experience I had 40 years ago, but it's not who I am. It's what I did at some point in my life. So does that make sense? So what about all of those descriptors that we're using, that we're currently using, but that no longer describe the, the, the person that we are today? And so that's what I want to talk about in this Where Are You Wednesday. It should have been When Are You Wednesday, really, because so many times we are describing ourselves in the present, but we're describing ourselves from our past experiences. And what we want to know is those past experiences are not who we are. They are experiences that we had, you know? I mean, people can show up in all kinds of their wounds, you know? I remember Carolyn Mace used to say, we lead with our woundedness, right? Um, and so a person can show up and say, well, you know, I was drug dependent, or I was alcohol dependent, or I was abused by my parents, or, uh, you know, in my youth I stole, or I lied, or I, you know, cheated on my first husband, or all these kinds of things that we can use to describe ourselves, but that are no longer accurate because they're no longer happening. They are the past. And if, um, if that's not what's going on in your present, if it is in the past, leave it there. Leave it there. Terry McBride, who is a frequent um, guest speaker here at Vision, he said this once. He said, keep talking about your past as your present, and it will keep resurrecting itself in your life. And I know you've had those experiences occasionally, haven't you, where you're like, oh, my God. Why am I experiencing the same thing? Oh my God, I thought I prayed this. I thought I figured this one out. Why am I experiencing the same thing again? Well, maybe that's why you're experiencing the same thing again, is that you keep telling that story. And it's not your story anymore. It's not who you are anymore. So we need to stop telling the story from our past. The biggest step that we can take when we desire a new story is to give up the old story. We have to give up the old story. And we cannot be giving it up if, we're keeping, if we keep retelling it 
in the present tense, right? We start describing ourselves by experiences that we've had, we're going to limit that expression that we can have. We, can, we limit the expression we're having in the present and we're also limiting our future by our past experiences. We box ourselves in, so to speak, right? We box ourselves in and we limit our ability to grow beyond our past by describing ourselves uh, by who we were, right? So if we want a better story for ourselves, we have to start uh, letting go of the old story and accepting a new story, creating a new story. Because here's what I know, our whole life is about growth. It's about growth, it's about expression, it's about expansion. Our souls crave expression. Our souls crave that expansiveness. We are here to grow, to evolve, to become greater self-actualized beings than ever before. And the way to do that is to welcome in the new and not cling to the old. Now, Ernest Holmes said this in Living Without Fear. He said, if we were to further inquire of our imagination what the ultimate purpose of evolution is, the most logical answer it could give would be that the purpose of life is to produce beings who can consciously cooperate with it. And through such cooperation, the evolving principle itself may more completely express. The evolving principle itself, that is spirit within us, as us, through us, into the world. And so it's as we let go of those past experiences can we embrace the newer or the bigger or the more self-actualized versions of ourselves. We can't just keep going back to the, to the past to create a new future. This is the whole old wine, new wine and old wineskins thing, right? We can't keep doing the old stuff and expecting different results. We can't just um, keep repeating the old things. What is it that, that Thomas Troward said that principle is not bound by precedent, which means principle is new in every single moment and it will not be bound by what has come before. So anything that you have experienced in your past life, <laughs> in your, you know, not past life, not like that kind of past life regression, but anything that you've experienced in your past cannot dictate, cannot limit any expression that you have in the present or in the future. We are here to express life, to live life, to express it more abundantly. And so we are, we are here to live life to the fullest. And in order to do that, we cannot be limited by those experiences that we have. When we become what we've experienced, we limit our ability to experience more, better, various experiences and other things that we can invite in. And then we just continue to outpicture the same things over and over, like Ernest Holmes said, with monotonous regularity, right? And so the first way we can create a new life for ourselves is to tell ourselves a better story. Just tell ourselves a better story. You know, uh, Ralph Waldo Emerson said this, he said, speak what you think today in hard words and tomorrow Speak what tomorrow thinks again in hard words, though it contradicts everything you say today. There's nothing wrong with that, right? He, I remember he said something about that, you know, consistency being the hobgoblin of mediocre minds. And, and that's the truth, right? Be exactly who you are. Be authentically who you are today in this moment. It doesn't matter what happened in the past. We are born anew in every moment, aren't we? born anew in every moment, in every day, uh, every morning, right? And you are not who you, who you were yesterday. You're certainly not who you were five years ago or two years ago. The Buddha said if, if you, know, you haven't seen someone in 10 minutes, you don't know them. So you are forever being renewed. You are forever being reborn. You are spirit in form, forever new. You've had experiences. You are not your experiences. So who are you now? Who are you now? 
You need to think about that. Who are you right now in this bright, beautiful, brand new moment in time? Who are you? You are the incarnation of the divine. You are spirit in form. You are the beloved of the most beloved. You are a child of the universe. You are the stuff of stars. You are the begotten son, daughter, of the only spirit that there is. You are an individualization of the most high. You are a one of a kind, unique expression of the divine creative power and presence that sought to know of itself through you and as you. You are the heir to all of the good that life holds. And Ernest Holmes said this. He said, life responds to us the way we approach it. We should choose that which we wish to embody and by constant attention to take on all of its characteristics. Let us choose to be identified with power, with love, with beauty, with peace, with happiness. Let us identify ourselves with abundance and with success. And that was from the Science Mind textbook. So this is how we are to describe ourselves. This is who we are. We are spirit in form. We are heir to all the good. We are those qualities that we attribute to the divine because that's the truth of who we are. All of those qualities. We need to embody them. We need to take them on. We need to make them ours individually, uniquely, as only we can. Let's pray out. I give great thanks for this time. I know it is all God and it is all good. I know as I look out among the population, I see God in form, every form, everyone, uniquely expressing the one life of God, knowing we are all one at the root, knowing that we are all spirit in form, that abundance and balance and beauty and peace and freedom and love and joy and unity, wholeness and wisdom, that all of it is ours to be and to express in the world. We are not limited by our past. We are these unique beings that are pure potential. And each moment holds a new mystery for us, who we will be, who we are in every moment we are by choice. So I give thanks for this time spent together. I know it is all God. It is all good. I simply release this to the law, knowing it is done in mind. With love and joy, I let it be. And so it is. Well, thanks for joining me today. There will be another uplift tomorrow at 1 p.m. I look forward to seeing you there. And for, from my heart to yours, we are vision. There is absolutely no distance. We are one in spirit. Um, I love you. Miss seeing your face. I will see you tomorrow at 1. Bye-bye.